This is uh, Devin Moran, driver of the 99 Lazy Days, Willie. Hello. What's up, superstar? Oh, not a whole lot. Just getting the work day started finally. What? What's next? The world? Is that what's next? Uh, no. So we actually raced Lernerville for Flow on Wednesday, and then we've got Fort Royal on f-ing Saturday. Do you do what? Which one of the two tracks do you do best at? So, so are you, you can win in uh, both of them. I'm planning on winning both of them, but uh, I'd say Lernerville I'm probably a little better at than Fort Royal. I've never. I've been good at Port a couple times, but never great. By the way, the number ninety nine, Devin Moran, uh, the uh, the lazy days. How, if you were to, what's it like? How does um, what's the guy in the booth from Columbus, Indiana? Uh, J- um, James Essex, and he always say, it yeah. always sounds like he's singing. He's like, and now the ninety nine, ninety nine. It sounds like he's almost an auctioneer when he when he when he when he does your sponsors. What's your official your sponsor rap sheet? Like it would be number ninety nine, Devin Moran, and the Yippio Sports uh, Lazy Day Special. What, what, what's yeah, your, what, the, uh, it's Devin Moran and the 99 Double Down Motorsports, Roger Sellers, Lazy Days RV, Big River Steel, Dirt Late Model. Currently sitting pretty good. Currently sitting in where? Currently sitting second in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series points. How many points behind the leader? <laughs> uh, too many to catch, I think. <laughs> we, gotta wait, we got to wait. We gotta wait till the playoffs for three. Yeah, and, hey, listen, all you gotta be, on. all you gotta be is top four, right? That's all we gotta do, baby. Top four. Top four. And what's the top four right now? Um, Ricky Thornton, me, Jonathan Davenport, Tim McCready, and fourth. Boy, it's, you know what? It's almost just like it was last year. Just except Pretty you know, hard. you know, put HUD in there for McCready, and it's 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 the same four. Same ride, so just different driver. So listen. I, I had a, a Scott Bloomquist idea. Now, it's either the dumbest idea ever, and everybody in Dirt Late Model Racing is going to laugh at me, or you coming from the driver's side of, of the side of the deal and the track owners, because your, your family owns a track like I do. Yep. And so you're always, and you know, just uh, being in that track promoter space is a very small space. And we've all, you know, over the years seen Scott, you know, Scott used to be the guy that you, you know, you would have you as a promoter sometimes would give a few extra dollars to, to, to guarantee that he'll be there so that you could promote it. And that put asses in the seats. Oh yeah. He would definitely bring people to the racetrack without a question. I mean, he's, and, and, and there are still those guys and promoters sometimes would cut a deal with Scott. Be like, listen, Scott, I'll, I'll get you like, you know, eight pit passes and like, you know, a thousand bucks for me to be able to really, really promote that you're going to be there. And I've cut those deals and I'm sure your family over the years cut those deals as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just part of the promotion side of things. You know? Right. So, and you know, Scott, at the end of the day, man, he's the greatest of all time. He was, he was a showman. Uh, he was his own, you know, for the longest time he drove for himself. He had his own chassis company, Scott, you know, Scott, Scott. And uh, what do you think about this idea? He has over 600, you know, uh, feature wins. Find out how many of those tracks are still operating, because I'm sure there's at least half that are probably closed up by now, the state of the business. And yeah. and I don't know if Scott is to, was to be cremated. I'm assuming he probably is. And you send a t- – uh, have Scott's family send – a tablespoon or a small portion in a Ziploc bag of Scott's remains to every track that's still around that he won an A main at, and ev- and that track has a Scott Bloomquist night, and they spread his ashes on the start finish line. Yeah, I think the hardest part's going to be figuring out where all he did win because I mean this dude won anywhere from California to Texas to to New York to everywhere in between, so that. I'm not saying no to that, but I'm saying that that might be something we talk to like Todd Turner or Michael Rigsby or someone with dirt on dirt about because yeah, you'd have their to get records a, are going to be you'd like ha- way way better than ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course you and I could never figure it out, but you know, like I'm sure somebody over the years has figured it out every place that he's won. Just like you know, they know you know. Well, your family knows of every place you've won. You know. Yeah, yeah. And how cool, yeah, and, and so for the local, prom- you know, it's kind of a way for Scott to give back to that local promoter, because Scott was always about the promotion and the showbiz side of it. You know, he was, Scott was kind of the showbiz part of Dirt Late Model Racing. 
He was the entertainer, wasn't he? Yeah, and what better way for his lineage to live on if every local, like my track, for instance. I, I know that he'd won a couple features at my, if I had just on a regular Saturday show, instead of like 2,000 to win, you know, 604 crates, maybe I do like a 5,000 to win Scott Bloomquist you know, memorial, and with that, we sprinkle his ashes on the start-finish line. It gives us a built-in promotion, and it makes Scott even more of the GOAT because he's given back to the sport, giving each local promoter a way to have a Scott Bloomquist night. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there's going to be tons of different deals, this and that, but, but yeah, I think everyone's going to have to find their own special way to figure out how to... Uh, um, Represent Scott because you know every you was. you know every dirt track that ever had him appear there has a Scott Bloomquist story and oh, it, you know guaranteed oh yeah I would say at least ninety percent of them you, you know what he you know what he did to me one time I'm dri- I'm driving I'm driving the water truck I'm laying water and all of a sudden he's and you know when you get in a water truck you kind of got to get your momentum going and you can't really stop for a lot of things just one because. The 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 you'll surf. Slide down the track. Yeah, you'll slide down the track. So I'm coming out of two, Boss Hogan, and he's on his four wheeler. There's a little pit bike, and he, he, he I'm like, and, and I mean, I really have to stop the damn thing down. So I'm already in a bad mood, and he goes, "Hey man, what are you putting in your water?" And I go, "Nothing." He goes, "Bull crap." Look at the residue on my four wheeler tires. Look at that blue residue on my four wheel tires. What are you? So he was the first one that actually, because of the residue on his four wheel tires, knew that I was juicing up my water a little bit. And he, and he, and he, and he blamed. I'm like, how did you figure that out? He's like, been a lot of places, Bubba. You aren't the smartest one I've ever dealt with. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> what he said. And he left. But uh, uh, obviously uh, a huge loss in the sport, and there's all kinds of rumors circulating around. I went through just some of the rumors I had heard, and I'm trying to be respectful to the family because there's just so many things floating out there. But, you know, uh, I was just thinking, I don't, either that's the dumbest promotion and everybody's going to make fun of me, or people will be like, that's actually pretty cool. I just don't know if logistically you could get it done. Yeah, I don't know. That's out of my realm of things, but... I mean, like I said, I think a ton of people are going to have different ideas on, on how to do different things. I know Bulls Gap is going to have, like, some kind of ceremony. And when we go to Eldor for the World 100, they're having a big Scott Bloomquist like ceremony, celebration of life deal. So I think there's going to be a, a lot of different people doing different things. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't think any idea is a dumb idea. Everybody's got their own ideas. And if you can make it work, I think it's something worth trying. Well, it, it would give the local track that's not going to have the Lucas guys here multiple times that local that local little track in in Kentucky that Scott won, you know, <clears throat> five features in back in the '90s. Give him a give him an opportunity to be able to have a piece of Scott and, and tie it into a promotion. So you know, track owners always looking for a promotion, and this is that would be a hell of a promotion. Oh, and like you said, Scott was the entertainer. He saw a lot on the promotion side because I think the reason why he did that because he realized the bigger the event was, the more money it'd pay to win, and he'd probably be the son of a bitch that would win it. Yeah, he would be. Then he'd fight Tony over the scales. <laughs> uh, he might do that. It might happen. Did he ever get in a fight with you, or did you stay cool-headed? No, with no I was. I, I mean, after he called me out on my water and told me I wasn't, I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, I just pretty much left him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Listen, man, I'll see. I'll see you when you come to East Bay. That's going to be a really memorial event. That's going to be cool. Yep, you coming down to East Bay for the, like, the oh, finale? I guess. Yeah, I'll be there for that Saturday night. <clears throat> and then you saw where I think we got five or six shows we did. Oh, trust me, I saw where we got to spend the whole week with you, Bubba. You liked that, huh? And an, hey, I, I like it as long as that as long as that track prep crew can give me a good race track. I uh, well, can't wait. We're, we're we're putting actually in the process of putting more new clay on there, so that we good. can so we can get it to to slick off, you know, better than than rubber up. Yeah. Well, hey, you've always said at least give you a shot. So I feel like this is the shot Ocala Speedway gets, and I, I'm excited. I think it's going to be actually really cool for. To, to race there, what is it? Five nights or six nights? Or what I, is yeah, it? What five, got? I think it's five, maybe six. And you're and you're always good at my place. Yeah, I run good there. I've won there before, so uh, it'd be pretty badass if we could just sweep the whole week. How's crazy ass Turbo doing? You got to keep him in check. I ain't even really talked to him a whole lot. He ain't been racing with us a ton. He's kind of been doing the summer nationals and this and that. But I saw him at Florence last week and hung out with him a little bit. But 
he he's kind of off doing his own thing, doing his own races right now. But I'm sure I'll see him here soon. Hey, buddy, thank you for for going on the air, giving me a a, a racer's perspective. Um, I I hope the racing community because we're gonna release this, you know, on my on my YouTube channel. I hope they don't. You know, like scorch me on it being a dumb idea. I'm just trying to think about you know Scott being the ultimate showman and giving back a little bit, and that would be what he would want. Just whether you can get it done or not, it's going to be you know, or maybe you just save it for the big tracks. Just uh, you know, you save it for the Eldoras, you save it for the for the big tracks. You know, uh, I mean, I don't disagree. I feel like the the small tracks. I mean, like you said, ninety percent of the race tracks we went to, Scott Bloomquist literally left some kind of imprint on the promoter or the fans or or the racers or someone. So I feel like everyone, everybody deserves to get a little Scott in their, in their racetrack. You think the, the series will come up with like maybe a, a zero, a little zero that everybody runs on their car to pay respects. And I'm, I'm sure that oh, prob- we already had that. At, we already had that at Batesville. Oh, okay. Perfect. And then a missing yep. man formation, maybe, you know, yep. We already did that at Batesville too. We, yeah. we were on top of it. Perfect. Hey bud, good talking to you. And thanks for going on the air with me, Devin. Oh, Thanks, Devin, so well Devin, pr- promote yeah. promote your show because I know that your Facebook show on Mondays does pretty well. Yeah, yeah, we just have just a little Monday Night Live Facebook. Not, nothing too crazy like the Bubba show, but me and my brother get on there and my wife checks us out and uh, shows what we got going on. And just try to pr- promote our uh, merchandise and our race and it's at shopdevinmoran.com. And, yeah, we have a lot of fun with it and hang out and uh, – just try to get our fan base a little bit bigger. Shop DevinMoran.com. He's the 99. He's my friend. I love him. He's, I call him the mayor because let me, he knows every, like he knows kind of, he kind of just knows everything about what's going on in the pits. He's kind of nice. like a little, yeah, like a little gossip bitch. He knows everything. <clears throat> I t- ain't no gossip bitch. I just listen. Everybody tells me everything. It's not like I gossip. I just I, listen. I, and I didn't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just saying, if you want to know what's going on, <laughs> if you want to know the, po- you should be the union rep. Well, Swally just needs to go to you and see what he can just get a cross section of what the drivers by talking to you. Devin, tell me what the drivers are saying. Well, 49's mad about this, and Mark Richards a little upset about that, and Longhorn dudes are set about that. I mean, you could just oh, give there'd me- always be something. There would always be something. In racing, it's nonstop. Oh yeah, nonstop bitching because they think somebody's cheating doing some kind of deal. You got it. So, hey man, good talking to you. Appreciate you going on. Thank you, Devin. Thanks, Bob. I'll see you in October. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, the ninety nine driver num- uh, number ninety nine, Devin Moran, Roger Sellers Motorsports. Is he gone? I had a question for him. Uh, <sighs> Damn it! What was you? <laughs> you didn't have a question. For I him. wanted to ask him about the missing man formation. It, well, like what it is? Do well, you know? no, just what it meant to him. Oh, okay. I had to act like I knew what it was, Bubba. Right. <laughs> Damn, you're pulled it off, kid. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. If you want 24-7 on-demand Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this.